Hi friends, I'm Katie and welcome back to Phoenix Jewelry for another Y wrapping tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how I made those two cross pendants that I shared with you on Wednesday. I made those for a couple of my girlfriends, one of which is moving off to South Korea and I wanted to send her off in style with a little something sparkly. So go ahead and stay tuned. Let's get into the video. Let's so let's this. jump right into the materials that we're going to be using today. I'm going to be using my 16 gauge wire for the base for the cross, the structure of the cross. And then for my design features, I'm going to be using my 20 gauge wire. You guys know the drill. I have my round nose pliers here with all my markings. I have my nylon pliers just to straighten my wires out and my wire cutters, trusty wire cutters here and my needle nose pliers. I'm not really sure what these ones are called. I'm going to have to look it up, but these have become my favorite pair of pliers, mainly because of that curve. I can get into a lot of, um, a lot more spaces with this pliers than I do with this one even though it's a smaller tip so yeah these are the tools I'm gonna be using I also have my hammer block and my chasing hammer and I've got my hammer block here my metal block and of course you know if you want to be true to your measurements pull out a ruler here we go. Let's get right One into it. One last thing I forgot to share is I have a little sketch here that gives the measurements for how big I want the cross to be. So this entire length, vertical length of the cross is one and a half inches. And then the horizontal line is gonna be one inch. So I'm gonna be using this throughout the process to measure out the wire that I'm using. So I have my wire here, it's about 11 inches. If you can see. And so I'm just gonna find my center point. And because this piece is symmetrical, it's gonna be important that we keep the proportions as close as possible, but I'm gonna find my half point And then I'm just gonna fold it in half. Like so. It's very rare that this, <laughs> it happens that I get half, exactly half, but anyways. Um, and I'm gonna just hold this and kind of get it as close as possible. Then I'm going to use these pliers here to kind of squish this part down. And I'm holding it firm here because what will happen is if I don't, it'll flip on me and it will kind of make the wires crooked. I hope it doesn't happen, but it happens to me often. So gonna take our time and squeeze this guy together and I'm actually gonna hammer this end piece out but I think I'm gonna make the the, the horizontal cross going that way before I start hammering just so I have the whole piece finished. So now I'm gonna bring my sketch in and kind of measure out the rest of the areas or mark off where I want to make my other curves. So I'm gonna bring my book in. Don't pay attention to all the other things on the book, but <laughs> uh, let's see. That's where we're at, and I'm gonna use 
my trusty micron pen and mark off where I want to make the cross right there. I'm going right above where I marked because that's exactly where I want the wire to curve. If I go directly on top of it, it's going to curve below. If I go below it, it's going to curve further below that. So <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm curving right above where I've marked. So it goes a little something like that. I'm going to do the same to the other side. Right above it. And like that. So we have something that looks like that. And now we're gonna bring our book back in with our little sketchy sketch. So we're gonna line it up again. And I'm just trying to find my center point here. I should have made the sketch closer over to the middle of the page because this is kind of throwing it off a little bit, but let's proceed. So same thing here, I'm going to get to the top of that, of my mark, I'm just going to bend it over. And I'm making sure to hold this part so it doesn't stretch out of form as well. same thing and squish it down oops so that's what I was talking about if we're not careful it'll flip on us sometimes I'm happy little mistakes happen so I can share them with you and show you how to fix them so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab it and twist my wire back around back into place so let's just take our time Now I've lost my marking on this one, so I'm gonna have to go back and redo that. Actually, I'll just flip it this way because it might be easier. So we're going here. Before I turn that one, I'm going to flip this guy. So 
So I'm coming to the edge right in the, between the two um, horizontal facing wires. I'm going to go right between there because I want to turn this up to make my start making my bail. Now let's go in and work on the other side. Again, we're just going to grab it right at the beginning, holding the base or the other part tightly, and then just going to swing this over. Drill. We're going to go ahead and squish this down. Just take our time. Like so. Then we're going to come in the middle right here. Actually, let me go the other direction. Middle right here. is what we have. I'm just going to straighten this part out. But this is what we have as our cross so far. And as you can tell, it's a little twisted right here, so I'm just going to use these and straighten them out. You can go in and make your adjustments as you go so you get that symmetrical look that you're going for and I think that's pretty good for me right now so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hammer this part out mostly the prongs the end prongs and then I'm gonna move into making the bail and then we get into the fun part which is creating the design features so Let's get right into that. So I'm gonna bring my book back in because I wanna mark off where I want my where my um the cross will stop bef uh, before I make the actual bail. So I'm gonna cut it, not cut it, but mark off right there. So now let's hammer out the portions of the pendant that we want to flatten. Let's get into making the bail. So you guys know how I do my bail. I usually just bend everything back. And then my trusty micron pen is what I'm gonna use to just curve everything over back into position. So I'm just setting it right there. And I'm guiding the wire over. I'm not pushing it, I'm just gently guiding. While it's on the pen, I'm gonna grab my pliers and just kind of squeeze this part in so it sits flat and completes that circle right there, like so. 
take it off put the end off right there I'm just gonna use my brown nose pliers that bad boy right there I'm just gonna turn it in So now that I have everything the way I want it, I'm gonna go in with my 20 gauge wire. It's probably about four or five inches, maybe. And I'm just gonna start wrapping so I keep these two parallel lines um, together. I'm just holding this piece of wire here and then bringing the rest around to make it a little bit more easy for me to wrap. And you know the drill, as you're going, go ahead and squeeze this guy down. Make sure it's flat and taut, not tight. And so I'm gonna be doing about seven of these wraps. However many could fit there without it looking too crazy and bulky. I think five might be better. So three, four, and five. Okay, six. <laughs> We'll do six since I already have this piece going across like that. So just move it down. Now we're just going to cut our little ends off and tuck those wires away. So next what we're going to do is apply the same design down here and I'm just going to use this end to wrap around six times. Let's go ahead and cut this one down. And cut this one as well. And what I want to do next is make the top part which my stone is gonna sit right here, like so. This is what we're left with, and the beads right there. So now what I'm gonna do is, I want this sparkly part to turn, be faced up, so I'm gonna do that like so. Actually, gonna bring this down and under. Seems easier to wrap that way, I think. <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna start the first part and then I'm gonna, just to keep the stone secure and then I'm gonna go in and do this part here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip my wire ends. And I'm probably gonna speed this part up because it's just gonna be me fiddling around and fixing things to my liking. But so far, this is what we have. We're almost done though, so. So there you have it guys, a super simple tutorial on how to make this cross pendant. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to share it with someone that you care about. See you in the next one in next year. Happy holidays friends. Bye.